Hi there, Dr. Lusby, like it says on the hat right here. I'm with uh, Envision, like it says on the shirt. And uh, we're gonna do uh, what we do. Chin up a little bit. So that position right there is about where we wanna start. You can go ahead and open your eyes. See the green flashing light. Green light is right where I want you to look the entire time. The red and white lights you can pretty much try to ignore. Put a couple little things on your eyelashes here to hold them out of the way. Keep looking right at the green flashing light. This is a thing to help hold your eyelids apart. Come to try to keep both eyes open. And if you're not sure if the other eyes open or not, just try not to squeeze, okay? Okay. That looks good. You'll feel a little water. Keep looking right at the green light. That's perfect. Okay, now we're going to switch from the green light in a second. Keep looking right at the green light. And now we're going to switch from the green light to this red light. See the red light? Yep. Good. Keep looking right at the red light. Back. Okay, you'll feel some pressure. Lights will get kind of dim. That's all normal. Lights have gotten dim, right? Yes, sir. Start. Well, very still. This will be 26 seconds. Stay nice and steady. You may see some uh, twinkly lights or shooting stars. That's all normal. Coming up to halfway done, right about there. Couple more seconds. Good. Okay. Keep looking right at the green flashing light. You see it there? Mm, yep. Right about there. At this point is usually a little fuzzy compared to before, but just keep looking right at it. All right, next you'll notice the flashing light may seem to move a little. Just kind of follow it slowly. Try not to run ahead of it. Okay, keep looking right at the green light. See it right there? Okay, hold it right on the green flashing light. <clears throat> yep, okay. Now the light's going to get big and blurry. Right? Yes. Keep looking right into the very center of the big blurry green light. And you'll hear a little buzz. And here we go. Good. Keep looking right at the light. We're pretty much done on this side, just being on a couple finishing touches here. Let's keep looking right at the green light.
keep looking right at the light. Close gently. Open. Close. All right, that side's all done. Looks very nice. Dr. Rude, I'm going to be narrating the second eye. We're about ready to get started here. So you'll see the big eye version of it on this particular view. So the first thing he'll do is he'll tape the eyelashes out of the way with this tape that doesn't stick to the eyelashes so much that it tears them out when he takes it off. It's called Tegaderm. It's just to keep those out of the way when we're doing the procedure, keep the, the field somewhat clean, not sterile, but clean. He puts a lid speculum in, which will hold the eyelid wide open so that the patient doesn't have to worry about blinking or closing their eye. This is probably one of the biggest questions I get from most patients is what if I blink or close my eyes? You can't, um, and the Xanax has relaxed the patient enough that he's not squeezing, so that's the only way you feel that speculum, otherwise you really don't feel that. The eye's been numbed, obviously. He's wiping that off with a sponge, so he didn't feel that. Now he'll rinse it off, um, and then he'll, he'll put a drop on again um, here for the Zemer laser to seat well. We'll dry up some of that. So you'll see the Zemer laser suction ring going on here in just a little bit. The technician's handing him the, the laser head. And this is the only part of the surgery that a patient feels. Um, you don't feel it touching your eye, you feel the pressure. So this is a glass plate that's pushing down on the eye. And to the patient, it feels like you're, somebody's taking their thumb and kind of smashing down on your eye. So you'll feel a little bit of pressure, but it's on for less than 30 seconds. So they're engaging the suction on the eye at this point to hold that ring in place so that the laser then can create the flap. And you'll see the laser head come over here in just a second right now. So that's the head of the laser creating the flap, and you'll see it do some movement. And it's laying a series of spots down into the laser, into the flap, into the cornea um, that creates that flap. And they'll look like little bubbles when he picks this up, um, and then he'll open up the flap using the instruments that you may have seen in the first eye. Once the laser is done, he'll take um, the laser as well as the suctioning all off all in one. That'll happen right here. And so the flap's been created. So you see all those little bubbles. And then he'll take an instrument and slide under there and kind of move some of those bubbles around and so that he can capture tracking with the actual treatment laser. At this point, he's marking the flap so that when he lifts it, he knows when he puts it back in place that it's in the exact position that it was before he lifted the flap. And that's just for reference points. Here he'll take and just move some of those bubbles out of the way and get a clear view of the pupil because the laser that does the treatment tracks on the pupil and the information from another instrument that we've already captured on the patient called the topolizer um, has marked that pupil in the center of the pupil and how much the eye rotates and so forth so that it knows exactly where the treatment should be placed. So he's doing that right now. Once he gets the laser to capture, he'll then lift the flap and start the treatment. So he's capturing now. And that's designed so that if the patient moves a little bit, um, then the, the laser will follow those small movements uh, and so the patient doesn't have to be too concerned about staring at that green light other than if there's large movements it will shut the laser off. And we just re-instruct the patient to keep looking at that green light and continue the treatment where it did shut off. So we got the tracking, I think, at this point. He's gonna lift the flap. In 
and inside you may have heard the buzz a little bit louder than you will out here, but the buzzing is the laser actually doing the treatment. And what it's doing is it's sculpting the cornea and changing the shape of the cornea right here. Sometimes you can see a little bit of change in the shine off of this right there. It has a pretty small correction, so the laser was, is already done. This is the EX500, um, Allegretto EX500 laser, which is one of the fastest lasers available. The importance for that is on the higher correction, um, the faster you can deliver the treatment, the more consistent your results are going to be. So if he had a much more significant correction, you'd want the laser to run as fast as possible. So you put the flap back in place, it just kind of dries it off with some sponges. I had a question earlier, how does that flap stick in place? And I use the analogy, it's like putting window tinting on or wallpapering on. You, you, you float it on some water and then you get all the bubbles and wrinkles out of the, the, out of the way and the flap actually kind of wants to stick down. Um, and then over the next 12 hours, that will heal the skin around the edges. Um, then over the next three months, uh, the flap does heal back into place. There's some restrictions all the way out to three months, but the majority of them are within the first week to two weeks. And that is the gist of it. So they'll put some drops on here now. This is an antibiotic, and the next one's a steroid. Um, and then they'll take the lid speculum out. And that same antibiotic and steroid drops will be started tomorrow four times a day from the patient. Uh, and tomorrow morning, he should be seen very well. He needs to go home and go to sleep at this point. Congratulations.